Some people are hardwired to love the ocean, spending days swimming and surfing and sailing. But for this marine biologist, that's not immersive enough. She prefers to be far below the surface, exploring the seas in experimental submarines. My favorite thing is being underwater. I've spent a whole year of my life underwater now in hours, 9,000 hours underwater. For me, it's pure magic, and I feel like I could just live there forever. Hands down, I'm completely obsessed. It's all I want to do with my life. My name is Shanice Stopnitsky, and I'm a submarine mother and pilot. <laughs> In 2018, Shani left her PhD program in marine biology so she could share her passion for underwater exploration with others. She raised money to buy two submarines, Noctiluca and a homemade sub called Fangtooth. Yes, an actual yellow submarine. We bought Fangtooth for $4,000. <laughs> so funny to me. You could just buy a submarine for $4,000. <laughs> Both are named after sea life. Fangtooth is this monstrous deep sea fish. And Noctiluca scintillans is a bioluminescent dinoflagellate responsible for this sea sparkle. Each submarine has its own character and its own things that it can do. And so we want to have sort of one of each style so that people can work on the ones that resonate the most with them. Yeah, I mean, I think that we need to replace all the pneumatic valves. But both subs needed a lot of work. Work that Shani and her team took on themselves. My credentials are none. <laughs> the thing with these types of projects is that they are as serious as people take them. It's a combination of boating and various art and engineering projects that I've engaged in over the last five years that have given me confidence to be able to approach a project like this but I'm in a, a state of learning for sure. Right now this project is a hobby and not a job. I hope to one day be able to get paid because it's a lot of hours. Normally I work as a marine scientist and I do this as a hobby. But they all are bent weird. That was a big leak. We're trying to get the subs perfectly operational so that we can use them to train people and to That's give beautiful. people the experience of a, of being able to dive at all, and B, of empowering people to do the operations themselves. Fangtooth is Shani's first experimental sub. It's homemade, built by a man in his garage with parts he got at the hardware store. He sold it, and it eventually ended up in the hands of Shani and her team. They've taken it out on about 50 dives, but it's still a work in progress. Fangtooth, we dive to about 30 feet max, and that's because of the way that her front viewport isn't domed. You know, the pressure from the outside sort of will bend the acrylic over that piece. It was a not super well thought out design, so she's limited to just, just 30 feet. So Fangtooth is, is like our accessible little toy submarine. It's just a really simple system. There's just a few levers. You add water, you add compressed air, that's it. Fangtooth's mechanics are pretty easy to use. It has four ballast tanks filled with air. Two in the front, one in the center, and one in the back. These keep the sub afloat on the surface. But when Shani releases air from the ballast tanks and floods them with water, it weighs down Fangtooth and lets it sink. As soon as I'm under the water, I go from being a little bit nervous to having just this total profound calmness and contentedness. So as soon as we're submerged, as soon as you know, the hatch is underwater, I transition from feeling you know, anxious about what's going on and worrying about all the controls to just feeling this extreme sense of peace. When she's ready to surface, she slowly refills the ballast tanks with air that she brings down with her, making Fangtooth buoyant again. She's also just really cute and fun. People that normally would be really intimidated by all of the mechanics, just to, ha just to see this thing and have it feel like more psychologically accessible because of its playfulness. Fangtooth is not yellow anymore because we never want to hear the Beatles song again. And so Fangtooth got painted white as the base coat for her new paint job where she's going to get painted by a street artist and will be 
a much more accessible little creature than she was before with her Captain America shield. Fangtooth is considered an experimental class submarine. There are commercially available submarines, but they come with a price tag of a few million dollars, largely because of the costly certification process. But with Fangtooth and other experimental class subs, DIYers like Shani skip over these steps. So in the United States, I would estimate that there are maybe 30 experimental class subs. It's hard to, to gauge because a lot of people do it without telling other people, but of the active community that is around sort of DIY subs, I would say there are about, there are probably 30 in various <laughs> states of repair and disrepair in the US. But you can't just buy them. Usually, you have to sort of demonstrate your competence so that, you know, whoever built the sub originally doesn't want to have to worry that something terrible is going to happen. So you kind of need to be a part of the community before it's even an option. It's not usually an option to just show up and buy one. I was very persuasive. <laughs> They're actually way safer than people think they are but of course you could die i mean you're in a steel capsule in the depths like you could conceivably die but it's actually way safer than people have in their minds and it's just because there's so much mitigation for everything that could possibly go wrong we are going to have a max bottom time of 15 minutes after 20 minutes please initiate a rescue noctiluca is shani and her group's second submarine Originally, it was commissioned by the Swedish Army, and then it passed through the hands of the anti-whaling activist group, the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society. And then it ended up here, with some amateur submarine enthusiasts. Noctiluca currently has a couple air leaks in the pneumatic system and the high-pressure air system. We have a hy minor hydraulic leak. It's just little things that pop up all the time. A couple gauges are down, and so we're just trying to replace every single little component to make sure that she's really ready to go. The sea trials is just a lot of testing of what to expect when you're out in the field and then to be able to prepare accordingly. The surface crew, I opened the panel and it is indeed leaking. Noctiluca was tested to a crush depth of 1,200 feet, which means at this, given the safety factor in the time that she was built, that's a rated depth of 300 feet. We're hoping to do some retrofitting to enable her to go deeper, but she has a ding in her front viewport. We need to replace the viewport before we can go to her full rated depth, and then we hope to get a beefier viewport that'll allow us to go deeper and then there's just a few more mods that we would have to make to allow her to go much deeper. We are preparing to ascend. Turns out Shani and her crew aren't the only ones interested in exploring the oceans with Fangtooth. So Fangtooth was stolen. It was very hectic for a few hours as I called every single law enforcement person and asked them if they had actually, yes, for real, seen a yellow submarine. I wasn't joking. And they all were like, oh, no, are you kidding? Like, that's not funny. Like, no, 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 I'm serious. Yellow submarine, someone could be dying in there right now. It's actually kind of important. And so I was really frantic because I was scared someone was going to get hurt. So it's super easy to get yourself into trouble if you don't know how to rescue yourself out of these things. And so I was very relieved to hear that she had been retrieved by the Emeryville police. Shani continues to work on Fangtooth and Noctiluca, bringing them both closer to her vision. And she actually wants to buy more submarines. But for her, it's not just about teaching the public how to work on and pilot these underwater vessels. When you go on a sub dive, there are all of these gelatinous creatures that have absolutely nothing in common with anything you've ever seen before. <laughs> They're absolutely magical. And they just have all of these behaviors and textures and colors that have nothing, no relationship to any land creatures. And it's utterly captivating to see these things that are truly, they're aliens on our own planet.